Let's say you're out in the middle of nowhere hiking and something unexpected, something catastrophic happens. And if you don't think it can happen to you, the statistics say it can really happen to anyone, anytime. And if it does happen to you, can your Apple Watch help save your life? What about a Garmin? What about even an Android watch like the Google Pixel 3? I notice there's a lot of confusion slash misinformation about these watches, what happens for each of them when they detect an incident. So I went to the documentation to get a definitive answer so that you know what to expect. On the Apple Watch, it's called fall detection. And to make sure it's on, just go into your watch app on your phone, emergency SOS, and make sure fall detection is enabled. You have two options. You can have it on just during workouts, or you can put it always on, in which case it will be on 24 seven, whether you're in the living room or out on the trail. Once it's enabled, the Apple Watch will detect a hard fall, trip, or slip using the accelerometer and gyroscope that's in the watch. If an incident happens, you'll get this screen. If it turns out you're okay, it's easy enough to cancel this, but if you do need help, it's very easy just to swipe this over to call emergency services. If the Apple Watch detects you haven't moved in a minute, it will automatically call emergency services for you. It'll buzz your wrist and it'll also sound an audible alarm in case there's somebody in the area that can come and help you. If your watch has a cellular account, the watch will dial emergency services directly. Otherwise, it'll look for your connected phone and try to call through your phone. If your phone and your watch don't have a signal with your carrier, most countries have a reciprocal emergency services agreement. So if other carriers are available, they will put your emergency services call through. And the big game changer for me is that if you don't have a cell phone signal, this process will use satellite SOS to try to contact emergency services. It'll be a text, it won't be a phone call, but it will still do it. And you're probably saying, don't you need to point the phone at the satellite in order for this to work on an iPhone? That's for an optimal connection. It does work if it's just laying on the ground. I did this test right here and you can see it's trying to get a satellite. It takes a little bit longer, but the satellite messages did go through and you can see I'm in this pretty challenging spot with these big granite boulders around me and it still went through. So even if you're laying there on the ground, a message can still go through via satellite. Now let's say you're laying there unconscious, but the watch has been able to connect to emergency services via cellular. When that happens, the Apple Watch will play an audio message informing emergency services that your Apple Watch detected a hard fall. The owner of the Apple Watch has experienced a hard fall and is not responding to their watch. And it will share your location, latitude, and longitude. The Apple Watch will then repeat that message, but at a lower volume. So if for some reason you're able to talk or there's somebody nearby, they can talk into the watch and communicate with emergency services that way. Now, another powerful thing that's happening while this is going on is that your medical ID is transmitted to emergency services. A medical ID you set up in the Apple Health app beforehand, you can list any medications you're on, any kind of conditions you have, and that gets sent uh, via data, not via voice, to emergency services. So if your watch calls and it says you've detected a hard fall and you set up your health ID to say you have a history of strokes, the emergency service person on the other end will know all of that right away. And if you added your emergency contacts to your medical ID, after the call ends, they will get a message sharing your location and letting them know that the watch detected a hard fall and dialed emergency services already. And the iPhone and Apple Watch have a related function called car crash detection that pretty much does the same thing if it detects that you've been in a car crash. You might be saying, well, does this actually work? Well, I did a cursory search and I saw that there are news stories about fall detection and car crash detection actually working. I don't expect this stuff to work perfectly all the time, but I'm not gonna sacrifice good for perfect. And overall, I think this technology is very impressive. Now on the Garmin, it's called incident detection and it's supported on these watches. To enable it, you have to set up your emergency contacts and then you basically turn it on or off for your different activities. Now the catch here is that it's not 24 seven. It only works when you're tracking one of these activities anywhere between the start and the end, including when it's paused. Now the other catch here is that your Garmin watch has to be connected to your phone via Bluetooth and your phone has to be connected via cellular. Otherwise, incident detection will not work. Now there's a misconception out there that the incident detection will trigger an SOS over your Garmin inReach if you have an inReach connected to your watch. And that is not the case. It will not automatically trigger an SOS on a Garmin inReach. You can do that if you pair your watch to your inReach unit 
and manually trigger an SOS, but if you're unconscious and you're out of cell phone range, this will not work. So that means your phone has to be in cellular range to work. So assuming that you've enabled it, you're in cellular range and you've fallen and it's detected an incident, you first get a countdown and then you have a chance to cancel it. And then if you don't cancel it, your emergency contacts are notified, not 911 or emergency services like the Apple Watch. And that's because an app can't dial emergency services on its own. Now, the obvious weakness here, aside from the fact that you need a cellular connection, is that if your emergency contacts aren't available to get the message, that's valuable time that you could lose in an emergency situation. Now, Garmin does have an LTE watch. You have to get a paid subscription for this. And this is a little bit different because when it detects an incident, it will automatically reach out to Garmin Response. And Garmin Response is the same response center that handles the Garmin inReach calls, and they will be able to contact an emergency service or report your condition to emergency service on your behalf. So in this case, there is a degree of uh, coverage and automation here. And just to reiterate and quote Garmin, neither your Garmin device nor the Garmin Connect app will make contact with an emergency service on your behalf. So it's totally up to your contacts or Garmin response if you have an LTE watch in order to contact emergency services. Now, obviously the coverage is not as comprehensive as what you get on an Apple Watch, but I would not discount the Garmin incident detection. I've heard from you personally, people in the audience who this has worked for, and I've seen stories out there of this working. So if you have a Garmin, it's definitely worth setting this up. Now there's several companies making Android Wear OS watches and it varies based on the watch, but if you have a Google Pixel watch, it looks like they have fall detection and car crash detection, and it works very similar to the way the Apple Watch works where you'll get a warning, you can cancel it, and if not, it will dial emergency services uh, directly on the watch if it's LTE or via your phone. Now, whether you have a satellite enabled phone like a Pixel 9, whether it falls back to the satellite, I could not find that in the documentation. So if somebody from Google is watching, leave a comment under the video and I'll pin it to the top so others can see. But overall, if you wanna get a Wear OS watch, I just recommend checking the specs for the watch first to ensure that it does have this type of coverage. I know that the Pixel 3 definitely does. Now, what if your fall detection doesn't go off? Can people track where you are if you just disappear? Well, on the Garmin watches, there's something called live tracking. You have to enable it and you have to be in cellular range, but it works really well. Think of like following runners in a marathon. Somebody can follow you, whoever you share this with, follow you on the map and see where you are. So as long as you have cellular range, this works great. And of course, if you have a Garmin inReach, there is a live tracking function. You have to pay for it as part of your subscription, uh, but you can send periodic breadcrumb trail out so that people can follow you in areas that don't have cellular connection and know where you are within a few minutes. Now, if you have an Apple Watch or an iPhone, you can share your location using the Find My app or via a text message. There's a few different ways to do it, but it's relatively easy to share your location with somebody. If you go out of cell phone range, this is not gonna work, but you can trigger a manual location update via satellite. Uh, you have to do this on your own, but if you're doing this periodically, it could be another way for somebody to find out where you are. Apple also has a neat function called check-in. You can do this through a text message or you can enable it to prompt you for it when you start a workout. It's really helpful. The idea is there's a lot of different parameters. You can have it go off if you don't finish a workout or if you don't check in within a certain amount of time, like you're going on a blind date, something like that. But this is another handy feature if you want to keep others in the loop in terms of your safety and location. Now, as long as we're talking about safety, let's just talk about getting lost. Let's just say we haven't dropped unconscious, but we just need to get back to the place where we started. Well, the Garmin watches have a very handy track back feature. The fidelity of the course is really good. All you have to do is start an activity. So start a hike, start a run, whatever it might be, and then just go into navigation, track back, and you can go back on the exact same path you came on back to the start. And this works really, really well. On the Apple Watch, there is the Compass app and it will automatically start tracking you if you go out of cell phone range. I found this to be hit or miss. The fidelity of the tracks isn't that great, but it does work sometimes and you can manually start it as well. 
and it will give you points that you can follow back to the start. But I think much easier on the Apple Watch is just to record your activity with a app like Work Outdoors or Footpath, and then you will have a visual representation of the line, and then you can just follow that line back. That seems to me to be a much easier uh, way to do it on the Apple Watch. Another important safety tool if you are lost is a flashlight. Now the newer Garmin models have an LED flashlight, not the screen, but an actual LED on the top and it works great. It's one of my favorite features on these newer Garmin watches. And it's not only a light, but it also has a strobe light in case you want to signal people. But overall, the new Garmins are great with the flashlight. The Apple Watches have a flashlight. It basically just turns the screen on. Same with the Pixel. It doesn't work that well. It's acceptable, but it's nothing I would depend on. I would just, even if you go out, make sure you have a light source like a headlamp. But in terms of the watches, the Garmin wins this one hands down. Last safety feature worth mentioning is the siren. Now the Apple Watch Ultra has a pretty loud siren on it, which could come in handy if you need to signal somebody. Maybe you're in the bushes or something and you just want that sound playing. This could be handy. The Garmin's don't have this, uh, it's a little surprising. Maybe in the future they will, but right now this is one that the Apple Watch Ultra wins. So when it comes to safety, there are pros and cons for all of these watches. For me personally, I think the Apple Watch nails it. I love having the 24 seven coverage. I love having the fallback to satellite if I'm out of cellular range with my phone, which is with me usually when I'm hiking. Those things to me make this more of a attractive option than the Garmin, which needs the cellular connection. And, you know, I also see Apple doing other things like the AFib detection. I know people who wear an Apple watch just because of AFib detection. Uh, and I see them, you know, I see rumors about blood pressure monitors and blood glucose monitoring. Apple seems to be focusing more on how this can, this watch can help you holistically in terms of your health and not just when you're out on a run or a hike like the Garmin seems to do. That said, I hope the Garmin starts focusing on this because I don't think there's a lot they need to do in order to uh, bring it up to a level maybe where the iPhone is in terms of the monitoring, the 24 seven monitoring, and even integrating with the Garmin in reach better. I think those are all things that could and should be happening. So we'll see what happens on the Phoenix 8 Pro or 9 or whatever the next one's gonna be. Uh, but overall for me, it's the Apple. Let me know what you guys are using, what you guys are thinking. And also if you have a success story or a rescue story, incident detection or fall detection or whatever it might be, leave a comment under the video. I'm sure it'll help other people who are looking at this and trying to make a decision on what's the better fit for them. Uh, I know you've shared them with me before. And if you have, share them again so people can see them here. All right, guys, thanks for watching and stay safe and I'll see you out on the trails.